John Krasinski's brand new film, If, is finally here. And I have been excited for this for a multitude of reasons. One, the guy did A Quiet Place Part 1 and A Quiet Place Part 2, both phenomenal movies. Two, it's Jim from The Office. Anytime he's going to do something, whether it's acting, directing, I'm going to be there to support him. Three, it deals with imaginary friends. I love the concept of that. If you remember the old school Cartoon Network show, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, one of my favorites ever on that channel. And four, it reminds me and harkens back to some old school classic family films such as Roger Rabbit, which are maybe, you know, not fully just for kids, but also for adults. And I just don't think we get family-friendly films like this type of movie nowadays, where it mixes and harkens imagination and creativeness, and also makes a story that while tolerable for kids, and kids will enjoy and laugh at, it will also be for adults to remind them why they may need to be a little bit more creative and remember their childhood just a tad bit more. With all those reasons said, if lived up to the hype for me and more and delivered exactly what I was hoping and I'm so happy to be sitting here today reviewing this movie for you guys today. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you don't know what IF is about, well, it's about a young girl who goes through a really difficult experience and begins to see everyone's imaginary friends who have been left behind as their real life friends have all grown up. Now, th this movie flat out, like just brought a sense of emotion to me for a multitude of reasons that not all I'm going to get into personally. But as I mentioned, I'm obsessed with the concept of imaginary friends. I think at one point in time, all of us have had some sort of imaginary friend as a kid, whether we can remember them fully or just remember to certain extents. And there's a reason I'm wearing this Detective Pikachu shirt is because Pokemon was like one of my obsessions as a kid, and I used to always have these imaginary friends, I guess, quote unquote, of Pikachu, Gengar, and other Pokemon in my life that I would like talk to. And I know that's weird and everything like that. And like, if you saw a kid talking to themselves, you'd probably think, oh, paranormal activity. But that's just kind of the creative mind of us kids and how it works. And I remember even as a kid, Toy Story is my favorite film of all time. And I used to think my toys would come to life and I would bust into the door and think that they were going to come to life. And they, they never did. You know, thankfully, I probably would have been scarred if they did. But it, it's those little things that if reminds me of and really centered me into my cozy chair at the theater. And I was sitting there just in awe of like how much it was opening back up a door that I didn't think about too often and really have not thought a lot about since having a corporate job for the last couple of years. And it kind of just reminds me that, yeah, I need to be a little bit more creative. I need to be a little bit more imaginative, but I also just need to open up more and still be that person that I was. And while I have all this stuff and clearly it resembles me as a child at heart sometimes, I need to bring back that child at heart and nature sometimes more. And I think if really delivers that in so many perfect ways that I think that is exactly what John Krasinski was going for is to make a movie that kids can go and enjoy. And they will laugh and they will smile. And I can tell you my screening, it was just filled to the brim with kids and families and before the screening, they were all screaming, and I, I mean, I, I thought it was going to be a nightmare in this theater. But then, they all, within the first 10 minutes, silenced out. And we're so locked in. The laughs, the smiles, the, the questions I would hear them ask their parents, they were so engaged to a film that is a lot stronger in emotion than I expected it to be. And I think this is a film that, parents should take their kids to to show you know it's not just coco melon and all that shit that we get nowadays it is something more important to that and i also love that at the same time while kids will like this movie parents will also walk away feeling the same way that i hopefully felt so i i'm just over the moon and i think john krasinski does a great job directing this i think he did a great job with the script as well i have a couple minor issues here and there with overall his script and we'll talk about that more in my issues because this is not a perfect movie this is a movie that delighted the ever living crap out of me and truly enough one of the other things that really stands out in here is ryan reynolds who i think 
has kind of found the same line of being the same character over and over and over. And I think there's a nuance to this character without getting into spoilers that I found to just be great. It's really one of my favorite Ryan Reynolds performances in a while. Among those likes, all of the imaginary friends are imagined in such a stunning way. The visual effects for them look phenomenal. There was never one instance where I was like, oh, that looks a little bit too fake. It bleeds the perfect line in between fake and beauty and really much realizing imaginary friends into our real world, which is a really fine line to bring in here because you can't make them look too realistic and you can't make them look too cartoony without it kind of taking away that realism approach. But it kind of just dragged me into this world and made me feel like I was actually living this and that this is something that could actually happen to someone. And the voices for everyone in here was just great. I mean, Steve Carell is blue, like might be the like showstopper of this all, but Phoebe Waller-Bridge's Blossom was an actually great surprise in here. Louis Gossett Jr., I loved. Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Maya Rudolph, Jon Stewart, Sam Rockwell. Man, I just kept sitting there, like, as his character is talking, I'm like, who the hell is that? And then once the credits rolled, I was like, oh, of course it was Sam Rockwell. It's from Maloney, Aquafina, Richard Jenkins. I mean, the list goes on and on from there of all the delightful voices. You'll really have to play a little bit of a fun game of who is in here and specifically like some surprises. Like when I saw the credits, I was like, that was that person? Okay, I'm in for it. I actually really think when it comes down to the performances, a big round of applause needs to be given to Kaylee Fleming, who I have loved and been a massive fan of since The Walking Dead when she played the grown-up version of Judith. I know probably a lot of you guys all tuned out of The Walking Dead by this point, but she was such a showstopper. I always wondered, who is this little girl? She deserves a lot more love, and I'm thinking after if we're going to be calling her the child performance of maybe not not just the movie summer season, but specifically of the 2024 year in terms of child performances. And I think Kaylee Fleming has such a bright career ahead of herself. She emoted such emotion, but at the same time, delightfulness. There's two specific moments in here that really hit me in the soft spot and really saw how great of a performance she can give. And it's one taking place in a retirement home. That's all I'll say. And two, one of the final moments in probably the last 10 minutes of the movie that really hit those nice emotional heartstrings. And she is great in this. Um, and I, I just I couldn't get enough of it. And I also just couldn't get enough of the gags in here and specifically what they were able to do with all the imaginary friends. There's one named Keith that every time it happened. This ongoing joke just continued to make me laugh all the way up until the final play out of it. Make sure to stay after the credits. The second if pops up, don't walk away. There's some little things right there that are definitely worth seeing and staying for. But all those little gags just, again, add to that all. The emotion is there and it feels real. And that is really much just what if is all about. I, I had such a good time with this movie, but... I do want to talk about some of my issues and things that I think maybe would have made this movie even better. And if for any reason we were to get a sequel, maybe we will, maybe we won't. I don't know what the future of this franchise or potential franchise could entail. But I think there's a couple things they could have tightened it up a bit. I think the pacing is a little bit weak. It does take its time to actually get into the actual concept of ifs. And I think even the explanation of what is going on here. Now... As the story plays out, I do think it gets very predictable with a couple things that it's trying to introduce. And I'm like, okay, it's probably going to be this. Oh, it is that. Still hits me in my feels, but I knew it was coming to that point. And there's a couple moments like that that I don't know what they could have done with the writing possibilities. Kids will probably be surprised, but adults will easily see all this coming from a mile away. And maybe that's where some of the pacing issues come from is that I just knew where certain things in the avenue of the story were going. And I do wish the story was a little bit more open with the idea of ifs. For taking place in New York City, I think the film should have been a little bit bigger. And I think there's a bigger story to be told here. But to play devil's advocate to that, I can also see the nuance of what John Krasinski was trying to go for. And before the film started, he came out and, well, not didn't come out, but he popped up on the screen and basically said that he made this film for his daughters. He is a girl dad. 
And I think a lot of girl dads and, again, daughters will be able to relate to heavily to this movie. But I think just in general, anyone who wants to have kids or anyone who is having kids or has kids already will be able to really relate to this film in any sort of manner and feel some type of way. And if the point of if was to make me feel some type of way, whether it was an emotion, whether it was delight, whether it was charm, whether it was to entertain me, whether it was just to remind me to be more creative, then damn did it do its job. This movie was about everything I wanted it to be. John Krasinski infuses creative charm, delightful jokes, and emotional melodies all into one family film that we just don't get anymore. Ryan Reynolds is phenomenal, but Kaylee Fleming is the new star of the summer movie season. I think will still be the best child performance of the year. Michael Giacchino, I have to acclaim this as well. His score is so whimsical. And all that tied together reminds me of why the If movie feels like a classic Pixar movie. And Pixar is personally my favorite movie studio of all time. So for me to walk out of If feeling like I just watched something that Pixar would have developed. And I'm actually kind of shocked. Ever crafted a story like this, I just felt delighted to no end. And I cannot wait to hear your guys' thoughts on this movie. So with all that said, I'm going to give If a B plus. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. Check out Into the Geekverse on Spotify, iTunes, and wherever you listen to podcasts. We also have a video format on YouTube where I do other content as well over there. And, of course, without further ado, guys, thank you so much again for watching. Stay classy.